If you're someone who watches movies, plays video games, or is just in any way plugged into modern pop culture, then you're probably at least somewhat familiar with The Avengers. Marvel's flagship superhero team has become a cornerstone of popular media over the past decade, owing largely to the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which turned Earth's Mightiest Heroes from a team of popular characters found mostly in the pages of comics, to the start of the highest grossing film of all time. It probably can't even be questioned right now that the Avengers are the flagship team of Marvel superheroes, and are probably only rivalled by Spider-Man as the faces of the company itself. But it wasn't always like this. Many longtime Marvel fans remember a time when the Avengers were overshadowed by the likes of the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, and even X-Force. It was the 90s, okay? And even as far as the early 21st century, the Avengers weren't exactly the monolith of popular culture that they would become only a decade later. Of course, the MCU should be credited for much of the Avengers' newfound popularity, as Marvel Studios built their shared universe around the likes of Thor, Iron Man and Captain America. However, when I think of the Avengers' renaissance as it happened throughout the 2000s and the 2010s, I think much of the team's success was in some way owed to Brian Michael Bendis, a comic book writer who, in 2004, took over the Avengers comic book series and made significant changes to the team status quo and the way they were approached and perceived within Marvel itself. So, in this video, I want to dive into the history behind Bendis' new Avengers series, explain the state of Earth's Mightiest Heroes prior to his arrival in 2004, and how he revolutionised the way the team were treated by Marvel Comics, and turned what was once a collection of B-list superheroes into the unquestionable cornerstone of the Marvel Universe. So, before we dive into the New Avengers series itself, I quickly want to overview the state of the Avengers comic books by the early 2000s, and the various influences behind Bendis' approach to reinventing the superhero team. The Avengers were first created in September 1963 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Initially comprised of Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Ant-Man and the Wasp, the team served to be an all-star lineup of various existing Marvel heroes, bringing together different characters from their own respected titles, as opposed to characters that solely existed in team books, such as the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. The Avengers would go on to become a key part of the Marvel Universe, with many of the company's flagship stories throughout the decades, placing Earth's mightiest heroes at the very centre. However, by the mid to late 1990s, the Avengers were no longer the premier superhero team at Marvel. The incredible success of the X-Men throughout the early 90s saw the Avengers become less integral throughout the later years, to the point where Marvel actually farmed both themselves and the Fantastic Four out to several Image Comics creators, to reinvent in a story known as Heroes Reborn, due to their low sales. By the early 2000s, the Avengers' fortunes had begun to improve, thanks to a very strong five-year run on the series by Kurt Busaic. However, Marvel's executives still believed that changes were needed in order to make the Avengers be perceived once again as a top-tier superhero team. As such, in March 2002, Marvel launched the first volume of The Ultimates, a modern-day retelling of the Avengers set in their new Ultimate continuity, brought to life by Mark Miller and Brian Hitch. The Ultimate was a huge success upon its initial release, and as such, senior figures within Marvel were keen to revamp the main continuity Avengers in order to capture the success of its Earth-1610 counterpart. The person entrusted to do this was Brian Michael Bendis, a writer who had become a popular figure within Marvel thanks to his work on Alias and Ultimate Spider-Man. In August of 2004, Bendis formally took over writing the Avengers title, and alongside artist David Finch, began to enact a master plan that would burn the Avengers as we knew them to the ground, and from their ashes, like a phoenix, resurrect them into something wholly new. In Avengers issue 500 from August 2004, Bendis began a story known as Avengers Disassembled. This story, which ran until January of 2005, saw the Avengers hit with a series of horrific events throughout a single day. For example, the recently deceased Jack of Hearts returns to Avengers Mansion and kills Scott Lang. 
The Avengers UN Charter is revoked following Tony Stark's relapse to alcoholism during a UN meeting. Vision flies a Quinjet into the mansion and spawns three Ultron robots, while a Kree armada invades Manhattan and attacks the team, resulting in the self-sacrifice and death of Hawkeye. As the Avengers grapple with the events that just transpired, it's revealed by Doctor Strange that one of their own members was responsible, the Scarlet Witch. The comic then reveals that Wanda had been driven insane by the loss of her children years earlier, created for magic so she and Vision could start a family, and sought revenge on the Avengers for erasing her memory and reversing the spell that conjured up her children. The comic concludes with Magneto arriving to take his daughter away, as the Avengers are left to deal with the aftermath of these horrific events, with the team eventually agreeing to disband and disassemble. With the Avengers now disbanded, Bendis began to execute his master plan. Following the conclusion of Disassembled in Avengers issue 503, the series was cancelled and replaced with a new, aptly named title, The New Avengers. The first six issues of New Avengers introduce us to this new look team, in a story entitled Breakout, wherein Electro attempts to stage a breakout of the maximum security prison, the RAF. The lineup consists of the various heroes who happen to be at or near the prison during the attempted breakout, with its initial lineup consisting of Captain America, Iron Man, Spider Man, Wolverine, Luke Cage, Spider Woman, and the Sentry. It's a fairly grounded and back to basics introduction for this new Avengers team, with the heroes attempting to track down the various villains that had escaped from the raft and travelling to the Savage Land to track down the person who hired Electro to stage the breakout in the first place. The story itself is fairly straightforward, and instead serves as a way for Bendis and Finch to bring together a very unique team of heroes, playing them all off one another, and seeing how they would all interact in this new setting. Much like the Avengers' initial formation some six decades earlier, it brings together a team by sheer happenstance, all from distinct corners of the Marvel Universe, but brought together by a common purpose. If Breakout served to be Bendis' introduction to this new look Avengers team, setting the groundwork for the new lineup and status quo, then it's in the following issues where New Avengers really begins to excel and come into its own. Issues 7 through 10 focus heavily on the character of the Sentry, initially introduced as a mysterious inmate of the Raft, who aids the Avengers in their efforts to contain the prisoners before disappearing. At the time, the Sentry was a fairly obscure Marvel character, created by Paul Jenkins, Jay Lee and Rick Veitch in July of 2000, as a Superman-esque figure in the Marvel Universe who battled addiction and personal turmoil, and initially conceived as a character for the Marvel Knights imprint. Initially debuted in a five-issue miniseries, the character was largely forgotten afterwards until he reappeared in New Avengers five years later, and it's in the subsequent issues of the series that Bendis and artist Steve McNiven delve into the backstory and the psychology of this very troubled hero. As the Avengers continue to apprehend the remaining fugitives of the RAF breakout, S.H.I.E.L.D. director Maria Hill investigates the whereabouts and the identity of the mysterious hero, eventually tracking him down to the Nevada deserts, where Captain America and Iron Man confront him in a cave. Sentry immediately urges the two heroes to leave, stating that by using his powers during the breakout, he awoke a fearful villain known as the Void. Tony then brings in the Sentry's real-life wife, Linda Reynolds, who he believed to be dead, as well as Paul Jenkins, the actual writer of the original Sentry comic book. It's then revealed that the Sentry was a superhero in the Silver Age of the Marvel Universe, but after discovering that the villainous Void was actually an evil manifestation of his own powers, made the entire world forget his existence, sentencing himself to the Raft in order to prevent the Void from emerging once again. The Sentry then disappears, as the Avengers alongside members of the Fantastic Four, the X-Men and the Inhumans follow him to his home, confronting the unstable hero as he transforms into the villainous Void. As the heroes attempt to fight off the Void, Emma Frost enters the Sentry's psyche to uncover his missing memories. Emma and the Sentry discover that two shadowy figures laid mental commands into his mind many years ago that caused him to erase the entire world's collective memories of the Sentry. Emma then brings in Sentry's wife, Linda Reynolds, into his psyche 
as she reaches out to her husband with memories of their life together, helping him gain control of his mind and his powers once again, as he returns to the real world and embraces his wife as the various heroes watch on, inviting him to join the new Avengers, an offer in which he accepts. The story then concludes with a rather interesting detail, as Tony Stark sits at a table with Reed Richards, Doctor Strange, Namor, Black Bolt and Charles Xavier, informing them of his decision to reform the Avengers and introducing readers to a new concept in the Marvel Universe, the Illuminati. The new Avengers series continue throughout the rest of 2005 and into 2006, with subsequent volumes introducing the character of Ronin, a lone warrior samurai revealed to be the former Daredevil ally Echo, as well as facing off against unique villains such as the Collective, the former X-Man Zorn, now infused with a mass of energy created from the various mutants that recently lost their powers. Going into the summer of 2006, the new Avengers firmly entrenched themselves as an ensemble that showcased each different corner of the Marvel Universe, existing as very much a modern successor to what the original Avengers team were to Marvel back in 1963. However, by the time that New Avengers issue 21 was released in June of 2006, the status quo would come to an untimely end, as the ongoing company-wide event Civil War took precedent and led to the disbandment of the New Avengers. During the Civil War event, the Avengers would be split into two distinct factions, Iron Man's state-approved Mighty Avengers team and Captain America's underground secret Avengers. In the aftermath of Civil War following the death of Captain America, the New Avengers comic showcased a team that involved some original members, namely Luke Cage, Spider-Man and Wolverine, alongside brand new additions such as Mockingbird, Miss Marvel and Bucky Barnes, now adopting the mantle of Captain America. And while this New Avengers comic existed until April of 2010, and was eventually relaunched later that year as part of Marvel's Heroic Age revamp, it is somewhat bittersweet that Bendis' original team only lasted a total of 21 issues, and in the wake of huge Marvel events that came after it, it does feel as if this version of Marvel's flagship team has been somewhat forgotten by many fans since. The New Avengers series was a massive moment for Marvel Comics during the mid-2000s, revitalising one of their longest-running titles in a way that made them feel fresh and exciting in ways they hadn't for many years. The New Avengers managed to brilliantly balance both being an ensemble of many of Marvel's flagship heroes, alongside a handful of relatively obscure and lesser seen characters, essentially using the star power of the likes of Spider-Man, Captain America, Wolverine and Iron Man to make those other characters feel equally A-list for being their fellow Avengers. While personal nostalgia may play a part in my fondness for this period of Marvel's history, I actually think it did a lot to make the Avengers feel fresh and exciting for the first time in years, moving them in a bold new direction, not dissimilar to how Grant Morrison revitalised the X-Men a few years earlier. Morrison's X-Men run set the template for how that team would be treated and interpreted for many years to come, both in comics and in their various on-screen adaptations. And in some way, I think Bendis' new Avengers accomplished similar, making the team once again feel elite to both those reading the comics and those within Marvel, and laying the foundation for the Avengers to become an undisputed cornerstone of the modern Marvel Universe. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below as well. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about in today's video. I can't wait to hear what you have to say as always. If you're new to Owen Likes Comics, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notify bell. And there should be some other videos on screen right now that you might also enjoy if you enjoyed this one. So why not take a look? If you want to help support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash owenlikescomics. There should be a link below me somewhere right now. And if you want some more of me, you can follow me on Twitter, just at owenlikescomics. That's all for this video, though. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. So until then, take care and keep reading.